All right, we are live. First time ever. We are the Pawn Boys. I'm Dennis Deuce, and I have absolutely nothing to do with Pawn, but I'm going to be on the show because I'm the producer. But we got Ryan Miner, Pawn Boy Extraordinaire. Welcome, welcome. This is our first uh, first ever edition of Pawn Boys. Uh, we will be running this program every Monday morning, hopefully at nine o'clock. Uh, we got a little bit of a late start this morning, but welcome. We hope to. Uh, uh, go over some things, maybe uh, some questions you might have uh, about the pond industry. Um, that's that's basically our goal. Have have a little bit of fun. Have a little bit of fun. Yeah. So we're gonna go through a couple of things each week. And man, my mouse doesn't work very well from this far away. Um, first thing we're gonna do every week is we're gonna start off with because you have the most amazing. I'm a sunglass guy. And you have the most amazing collection of sunglasses. We, a of them right now. we are. So every week we're going to wear a new pair of uh, sunglasses. Then we'll take them off right after the intro These are and try and sell them. No. Oh. Oakley's. Uh, I've got all sorts of designer sunglasses. They are 100% genuine, too. They're yeah. These, these ones are beautiful. you got to check these out. They're Ray-Bans, dual tone. Absolutely loving these. And the thing that's cool about these ones is they've got the uh, copper-toned lens, which is really abnormal in Ray-Bans. I'm a copper-toned lens guy, and I don't own a lot of Ray-Bans simply because they're usually the, the gray or the green. Right. Um, but these are the, the kind of the driver color, some people will call it. Very sick. Very sick. you got to the check these styles. out. It's not the old styles. It's the new styles. Though you've got a pair from the 80s over there. Blue and white. Vintage. Well, the retro oh. stuff is in right now. Man, so those things are sick. Retro stuff is in, and we got we got a lot of that stuff as well. Come down and check it out. We, you know, the the stuff that you see in a pawn shop is not what you expect. We have got literally a little bit of everything. Uh, it's just fun to come and look. If you don't even plan on buying anything, come in and check some some stuff out. You know, I I have not been a pawn person, but working with you over the last couple of weeks, I gotta say, I look forward to coming into your shop. Because there is always cool stuff in here. Yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, it, it, people that have never been into a pawn shop before uh, come in here, and they're just astounded by the stuff that they can they can find. Uh, it, it's totally unexpected. It's totally unexpected thing. So uh, it, it, a lot of fun. You can come down and check it out. We get, we've got jewelry, coins, guns. Uh, bicycles, motorcycles. I could go on and on and on and on with the stuff that we have here. Uh, that's uh, that's just a part. That's just a part of the things that we have here in the shop. Small piece. So, all right. We're going to be doing a couple of things um, each week. We will have a guest whenever we can possibly pull one together. And we've got one this week. And our guest relates to this highlighted piece behind us. It's already sold because our guest bought it. This is a 1903 uh, National Cash Register Company nickel, solid nickel cash register. Uh, just, just an example of some of the things that we we see come through the door, uh, and that's that's it's it's just cool stuff, cool stuff. So, so one thing that I want to do each week, because I'm sure you've been in this business for 12 years, you have got to have just a ton of really interesting pawn stories. Oh yeah. So, slowly but surely, we're going to fill a book, one chapter, one week at a time. Absolutely. So, little boys and girls, it's now time for Pawn Tales. Well, uh, what, one of the things, one of the stories I like to tell people, you know, when I, I meet people and uh, I tell them what I do for a living, they're instantly fascinated, and I get barraged by questions. Uh and and so I, I I have got these aren't tales I mean these are things that have actually happened in the store uh, some stories that I kind of pull up to uh, uh, I don't know to uh, fascinate them uh, one time I did uh, a guy comes through the door and he uh, wanted wanted to pawn his grave plot and uh, he I had no idea I had no, I had never I mean, that's the fun thing about this industry is that things will come through the door that you have never seen before in your whole life. Of course, the grave plot didn't come through the door. No. The, the guy. Well, he was holding the deed. 
Yeah. <laughs> but the plot stayed where it was. I had never purchased one of these things before. Okay, I had no idea how much they were worth. It turns out they're very expensive items. I've uh, never had a need for one before. Hopefully, not very much. You know, I won't in the very in the, in the future. But uh, you know, but if if it happens really quick, maybe you'll have the first broadcast live hangout on air funeral. Let's hope not. Let's hope not. <laughs> <laughs> he pawns this thing, and uh, he had every intention of coming back and getting it. Uh, I kept it for him, and uh, he didn't come back and get it. Well, ironically enough, he uh, uh, his girlfriend calls me uh, probably two months after that, and he had passed away. This guy had passed away. The guy who had sold you the plot that didn't think he needed it anymore. Absolutely. He had passed away, and uh, it was very sad. That was a very, very sad situation. But his girlfriend was wanting to know if she could acquire the pawn or acquire the, uh, the great plot again. I said, sure, come on back and we'll, we'll take care of it. Uh, I never saw her again. I still have this thing, uh, so if anybody's interested in, in purchasing something like this, I do, I, I do have it. So. And in what uh, grave area is this? Uh, I believe it's the, the West Valley one. I think there's one over by Winder Dairy. Uh, it's supposed to be a nice, nice plot. I mean, nice, nice place. So. Have you ever seen it? I haven't personally. <laughs> I haven't personally. I haven't been out there. So but if you're looking for a plot for your burial, or you know, a Christmas gift for somebody, <laughs> he says Christmas like, like a burial plot. Like, not that he says Christmas like a burial plot. It's the, key, the gift that keeps on giving. I'm sure. It, it, it is the most eternal gift. It but never wears out. We're not making light of this, but um, it, it just goes to show you that we take literally anything here at Lightning Pond, if it has value, if it has value. That, that, that is a great, that is a great tale. So before we jump to our guest, do you have something else that you'd like to uh, highlight around the shop that might be interesting to people? Well, um, I do have I do have a great stock of guns. Uh, those who are in the market for guns, uh, it, it's a great place to come shop. I, I have a little bit of everything. Now, I might not have exactly what you're looking for at the time that you're looking for it, but I also do take uh, requests. So if somebody's looking for something that they, uh, you know, they they want to buy used and don't want to buy new, I take requests, and when I do get that item in, I'll give them a call, and we can hopefully make a deal at that point. Um, so I have guns and I have coins, uh, jewelry. Uh, I have bikes and musical instruments, and and probably the thing that I have the most of is tools. Uh, people don't really think of, of of a pawn shop necessarily for some place to buy tools. They'll go down to Lowe's or they'll go down to Home Depot or some of the local places they can buy new tools and buy them. Man, I have got more tools than I know what to do with, and uh, it's it's. Uh, come in and check it out. I, I've got sawzalls and saws and drills and and I, I'm really picky with what I take in as far as tools go. So it's not old, worn out stuff. This is new model, name brand, excellent condition stuff. Um, and that's just just a just a tip of the iceberg of the stuff that I have in here. So I don't have anything specific. I mean, I have watches and. You know, high-end watches and diamonds and gold and you name it, you name it. Vintage guitars, uh, all sorts of all sorts of neat stuff. Uh, small gifts that you know, it's not too late to come down and get something for uh, that last-minute person on your list. I've got um, entry-level guitars under a hundred dollars, amps to go with those guitars, and I know a lot of people uh, have that on their on their 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 get their gift list for whoever they're buying for. Um, don't go to Walmart and buy the first act thing. It, they're they're junky. Come down and buy a name brand guitar for less than what you could buy it for new at at, at Walmart. We always kind of joke around here. Uh, cheaper than Walmart. That's the that's kind of our our, our motto. <laughs> cheaper than Walmart. Absolutely. So. All right. So Ryan, we're gonna bring on our guest. Okay. Um, a quick question. You were telling me a story about that watch right there, which they can't see. Is that case unlocked that while well, the guest is on, I could grab that and we could actually highlight it oh, on camera? Yeah, we could unlock it. There's some keys right over here. Okay. I'll go, I'll go find those keys. And you were talking about bikes. 
Mm -hmm. So we are going to bring in uh, one of the other um, Gombok clients uh, and the guy who introduced us, Kirk, who you'll be able to catch later today on Jerk's Corner. Um, and Kirk's a uh, longtime friend of Ryan and uh, also a local business guy. And he's holding a clarinet. I have a feeling he might play. But he's also wearing some sunglasses. We have. He, he he has some aviators on, so we're gonna bring on this week's guest, Kirk Sherrod from Jerk's Bike Shop. There was no fanfare, I man. I was just saying, there was no fanfare. I expected some kind of <laughs> applause or something. I don't know. Some, I guess this is our first show. Yeah, I can, I can get applause. Hold on. Wow, that deserves applause. Not even one last. You don't play that thing, man. Right? That is a clarinet without a reed. So a I don't know if you're gonna get far with that one. Well, that's what I was worried. This is the reed, right? This yeah, I think it's I think it's broken, but that is, that easily is replaced. What does something like that cost? You know, um, that is a student model. You can pick that particular one up for less than a hundred dollars. Uh, and I've got all sorts of different models. You know, starting at about seventy-five, going up to about five hundred dollars. I remember in high school we were playing these, and my parents had to go rent this. Were you a band geek? I was a band geek. And my parents had to rent one of these for me, and I hated playing this thing. I couldn't do it right. It was squeaking all the time, and I, you know, and they, and they were mad at me because they'd rented this thing, and it cost a bunch of money, and I was like, I can't oh, wait. yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, they should have just come down and bought one from the pawn shop. You're, you're throwing money down a hole Yeah. that that's, way. That's exactly what happened. You know, and I can't believe I just put my mouth on that. I have no <laughs> idea where this has been, and I just put my mouth on that. If you come into a pawn shop, you probably should not. I'm going to get some kind of airborne syphilis or whatnot for putting that on there. It builds up immunity, man. It, it does. Well, then come on down to the pawn shop and build up your immunity by sucking on one of these liquor sticks. Now, Kurt, um, you you you're kind of in a unique in a unique position. You have been in the pawn industry before. I have uh, worked in the pawn industry. Uh, but you're also somebody that uh, that shops in pawn shops on a regular basis. I do, yes. Uh, one of the things that I want to ask you, I mean, you worked in the pawn, bit, pawn industry years ago. Yeah, uh, years ago. For one of the, I, I would arguably say, the pioneers of pawn here in the Salt Lake Valley. Yep. Uh, how do you, how has the pawn industry changed over, over the years? Well, I see a lot more pawn shops. That's for sure. Um, and then I see a lot less pawn shops. You know, some of the ones that um, used to be around when I was in the pawn business are no longer around. Um, but I see other pawn shops. I see um, larger pawn shops that have come along, like big box store pawn shop type stuff, Cash America, places like that. Um, I've seen those come along. Um, you know, I've spent a lot of time going to different pawn shops, buying things. Um, it's a great place to buy stuff, and it's a great place to go look and see what's out there. The value for what you get for the money is so much better at a pawn shop. There's right. no question about it. And what I love about pawn shops like your pawn shop is that I can come in here, we can work out a deal, I can go home with something and feel good about it, and I feel like a rock star when I buy something at a pawn shop. I'm like, I bought this for like a quarter of the value or half of the value of what it was going to cost me at, at the store, and it's in good shape. And it's the hunt. You know, you're looking, you want to go find that thing. I love that part about it. And uh, I, I, there is one thing I want to say, though, that has happened. Some of the bigger box stores, pawn shops, like the, the big, huge shops, I don't have Pick as the much. Chains. I don't have nearly as much fun going to places like that. And I don't find nearly the cool stuff. That, it's all the same stuff. A crappy drill that doesn't work or... Uh, you, you always see the, the same stuff there, you know, a hundred different laptop computers that are out of date. I always see the same stuff in there. I'm not that interested in buying that stuff. It just, it, it's almost like they don't care. You know, I'm just going to buy stuff. And get, I love coming in a place like this because I can look around and say, this guy's passionate about what he does. He's got cool stuff on the floor, and I can usually find something that I want. For example, this. For example, this. Look I, how cool this is. The, Kirk bought this. I had this sitting in my store, and uh, he owns a bicycle shop that that has kind of an antiquey feel in the in the inside of it. it goes perfect. It goes perfect with kind of his his theme. And uh, my my theme is antiques. I'm I'm becoming an antique, so I thought maybe I would just keep that <laughs> that thing, <laughs> that antique thing. You know, just as just as Kirk was saying, I I like to 
I like to kind of pride myself on. I th I'd like to think I'm changing the pawn in industry uh, somewhat, bringing it kind of out of the dark ages. A lot of people have the, uh, I don't know, the uh, the notion that when they walk into a pawn shop, they're gonna it's this dark dungeness fat guy sitting behind the counter smoking a cigarette. <laughs> There are those. I've seen those. <laughs> I, I I do have a little bit of a belly. I've got to admit, but but uh, I I don't smoke and I don't wear a lot of chains. I've got a small one that I wear on my neck. But uh, I, I'm actually nice. Uh, and a lot of these, I mean, if you've been into a pawn shop where you didn't feel like you're welcome. Oh yeah. And it's almost a burden that you're in there, like, oh, great, we've got another customer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, th that is, you know, as as kind of a rule, the pawn customer is not a very loyal customer. Okay, oh, yeah. um, and I'd like to think I'm changing that. And I think one of the reasons was is they just never people. There, there was no customer service. Yeah. There was no customer service. Yeah. And and I care about the people that come in here. I do realize that that. Uh, that, that these people are paying my bills, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. And a lot of people don't realize, or a lot of owners don't realize that, or people working in pawn shops. And so I'd like to think in some small way, uh, I'm changing that. Yeah, so, I believe that. I really believe that. So when you worked in the pawn industry, is that, I mean, what? how, how, many, how many years has it been now? It's 20 plus years. Um, let's see. It would have been, uh, yeah, it's 20. Yeah, 20, 20 years, years exactly. since you've been in 20 there. 20 years exactly. Okay. Yeah. Quite a while ago. You're that old? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Antiques. Antiques. Um, how – there weren't that many pawn shops around when you were – No, not really. As you said, there's more pawn shops. There's now. more pawn shops, yeah. I think, uh, I think there's more. And, you know, what's interesting about that, I look around at some of the pawn shops that were around when I was, when I was doing that. Um, a lot of those pawn shops aren't doing so hot now. Right. And I think a lot of it is because they haven't changed. Their, evolved. They haven't evolved with the, right. the business style and things that have happened. Right. Um, you know, I think a lot of them would complain that the, the big stores are taking over, but um, I think that the main problem with that is they just haven't evolved along with, with this, the, what's happening in the, in the world. And, uh, and I think that has a lot to do with it. Yeah. You know, I, I have a pawn story. Go ahead. Is this a good time? Can I tell the fun story now? You can. You guys. Or do I have to camera. wait? You can tell the fun story anytime you want. Here, let's get a close okay, up so, on your face while you tell your so fun story. Why does it have to be a close up on my face? It's not nothing know, to not. do with my face. <laughs> Very little, anyway. You can't see your eyes. Now. Okay, you can't see. My, well, that's good because I don't want anybody to see my eyes. Because you know, I used to be in the pond business. Okay, so when I work, I work used to work at Witzel's Pond, and Witzel's Pond is still available. It's still down. Where is it? 17 South? 17 Somewhere South. downtown, yeah. Okay, so I, uh, I, we had a guy come in that wanted to pawn his glass eye. And it was just crazy. Dude, I don't know if I could beat that one. I, I, that, I'm not that, trying to beat anything. That, 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 you know. <laughs> that, that's, uh, that, that beats my uh, gray claw story. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it does. Well, anyway, let me, let me finish. Cause maybe, wait till this, you're going to get a kick out of this. So this guy comes in, he wants to pawn his glass eye. Are they what? worth anything? I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, and Dave at the time, I mean, it was kind of a you know standing joke that he he gave money for a for a glass eye, and I think he gave a hundred bucks for it or something, or one hundred and fifty bucks for it. And uh, when you know, always the the thing we would tell people is they say, oh, I'm, I'm for sure I'm coming back for this, guaranteed I'm coming back. Well, you never really know if they're coming back or not because. You would think out of the one thing. Out of the one thing, you would think for sure this guy would come back for his his glass eye. It, he never came back. Mm. And I thought, you know what I thought? I thought they were round. You know, like a ball, like a marble. You know, you just pop that thing in. Well, I, are eyeballs round? Yeah. Well, I don't know. We're getting. Well, yeah, they are. But anyway, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't round. Just kind of a piece that goes over the the eye socket, you know, kind of fits in, and you just stick it in there. Anyway, Dave. It, <laughs> so somewhere there's some guy running around with one eye. With one eye, and who okay. knows if he's still alive? He was quite old when he came in. But anyway, Dave Dave had that put on a chain, 
and had an inscription put on it. And, and the inscription on it says, here's looking at you, babe. <laughs> <laughs> and he still wears it to this day. I saw him not, not three weeks ago, and he's still wearing this eye on his chain that says, here's looking at you, babe. <laughs> That's a good one. So there's anyway, there's a you know I you know I have uh, I, I have this story now I know this is a uh, uh, this is a G-rated show okay right. and uh, I I want to keep it as such um, and you know I'm I'm maybe I was stepped over the top. <laughs> I I'm not a uh, I, I'm not a sheltered person I've seen some things in my life uh, I'm not a crazy person either uh, I had one time where. Um, and I didn't even know they had such a thing before the guy brought it in, but it was a sex swing. <laughs> and um, no, we're going to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, well, we go. <laughs> I I guess I was sheltered. I I asked him, "What is a sex swing?" And um, he didn't say anything, but he broke out a brochure. No, oh, that showed kind of what it what it would do. And I'm like, okay. And he uh, proceeded to let me know that it was lightly used. Oh, good. Okay. Because that would be. <laughs> now, the end of the story was is 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 I didn't end up taking it because a lightly used sex swing doesn't sound like something I'd probably sell. To me. No, it doesn't sound like something. A anyway, uh, you never know. <laughs> Uh, the guy tried. The guy tried. Uh, I didn't take it, so I don't have it for sale here. So don't anybody asking. I don't have it for sale here. But um, the point is, is, we'll take a look at whatever you have, uh, and that's what I tell people when they call me on the phone. Bring it in. Uh, have, you, have you sought counseling after reading the brochure? <laughs> There were there were drawings, oh, thankfully. Okay. So that's that's nice. <laughs> that's, that's, that, that's that's a good story. But that is a good story. Uh, we'll t bring it bring the stuff down. Now we don't only do loans. Just to kind of tell you how it works is is we we do loans here on items of uh, that that have value. So they're collateral items. You can you know we keep the items here. You can come back and get the items. Uh, buy them back for for a small interest. You can roll the loan over if you wanted to pay the interest on that item. But we also buy items. So if you just wanted to come in and sell your item, uh, you can come in and sell it without having any further attachment to that item or obligation to it. Um, it, it. It's a great alternative for somebody that doesn't want some spooky guy coming to their house that they sell on KSL. And I that's there's there's a peace of mind there. Um, you know, you don't know who you're dealing with over the phone, and and uh, you know, although there is, you might not get as much for me as you would if you sold it to a private party. It's quick cash in a safe, controlled environment, um, and that's and that's a peace of mind for a lot of people. Um, and I don't know, did did you guys deal in a lot of purchases, or was it was it mainly just pawns when you were down there? You know, I think right at the time I was getting ready to leave there, they had gone over to the the sale and purchase option. Before that, I don't think there was a sale option before that. When I was started working there, it was pawn only. And I, I is that I think that's something that's come along later, or is just starting to come along when I was. Yeah, there. I think it's a fairly new concept to the to the pawn industry. Every, you know, everybody thinks it's just loans or or whatever. But um, th there's been some state legislation change that's made it a little bit easier for for the pawn shops to mm -hmm. to work that way. Um, so you know, 20 years ago, it was a, it was a different industry, yeah. uh, and and uh, you know, with now we're we're uh, like I said, I I'd like to think that we're kind of coming out of the dark ages. There's some TV programs that kind of you know strike people's you know curiosity, and and uh, and I'm grateful for those programs. They're not at all real, in case you didn't know that. Um, they're pretty contrived. Uh, this is not real either. No, this is this is this is all scripted. <laughs> um, if you ever want to come down and see what really happens in the in, in the in the pawn shops or the pawn industry, come down and hang out. I don't mind. You can come down, grab a chair, see what uh, see what we do. The cool thing about bringing something down to Ryan would be that you could be like the show and find out what your item is worth or what the value is there and just have fun with Ryan. You don't have to 
you don't have to feel uncomfortable by coming down and. and I'm very him. user friendly. He's very user friendly. Yeah. As we talked about with the sex swing thing, he's so <laughs> user friendly that he's. Really I, I didn't laugh at the guy. Yeah, I didn't yeah. laugh at him. Oh, and nice, I was, nice yeah, about you. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. I took him seriously, and uh, I laughed afterwards. Yeah. You know, of course, and you know when when and nobody. He, he got out so. to the car with his buddies, like, yeah, it was so funny. We went in there with the sex swing. And then we should have videotaped that. I was telling. Uh, it's on YouTube somewhere. A couple of weeks ago, I was telling. I was at at a, at a doctor's appointment for my for for some of my kids, and and then of course. You know, we get into conversations because all the nurses down there know that I'm, you know, what I do. And tell us another story. Tell us another story. And uh, I told them that story. Yeah. And uh, they all wanted to climb underneath the counter. I really shouldn't have kind of told that. But. That's the last time they're going to ask you to tell. Yeah. The story. I, you know, I, did, I didn't mean for that to happen, but. Uh, Brian's fun at parties too. Yeah. <laughs> Just leave your sex swing at home. Yeah, please, please. I don't. I don't take sex swings, okay, or anything like that, okay. Yeah. That's that's. Uh, that's I guess good. I draw the line there. We can we can go away from sex swings. Now. Yeah. <laughs> this is a G-rated show. It really is. It is. I mean, <laughs> it is. Um, anyway, that is kind of. Uh, you know, I'd love to hear from from people uh, either through my email or my Facebook site or uh, Google Plus or whatever it might be. Tell me what you want to hear, and uh, we'll get people in here, uh, other pawnbrokers, uh, people that that you want to hear from, or things that you might want to hear. Uh, that that's how I kind of want to run this is is by your um, suggestions. Um, you have anything else to add, Kurt? Oh, I don't think so. I think we're. Uh, you got to get off to work here. I gotta soon. go. Yeah, I gotta go down and open my shop. Kurt right. owns uh, Kurt owns Jerk's Bicycle Shop. Down the street in Murray, yep. and uh, he uh, is great, great service, just like we do here. And uh, we we actually collaborate on some stuff. We send stuff down to, you know, if I don't know something or something about a bike, and you know, we Ryan sends all his sex swings down. <laughs> <laughs> I want that back. By I'm the never way. gonna leave you. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, uh, I appreciate you coming, Kurt. Thank you. And uh, maybe hope you hope to have you on soon. And uh, appreciate your eyeball story. <laughs> well, not, there's nothing like an eyeball story. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, <laughs> give it up for Kurt. Hey, thanks, Ryan. Thank you. Appreciate Good it. See you. All right. Now, you and I talked about one other thing that we wanted to look at doing. It came up just uh, before we went live, which is that both of us are bilingual. Mm -hmm. We are. And you get to use that bilingual thing quite often. Around the shop here, I speak more Spanish here almost than I do English, and so, I'm thankful for that. I've got a very big Spanish clientele that knows that I can communicate with them, and uh, they can feel comfortable, and uh, that it's I, I love that I'm able to communicate. So, so for the next two minutes, we're gonna do the lightning Spanish round. Okay. For okay. The next two minutes, the show's going Spanish. Sorry, we don't have the technology to give you subtitles underneath, so it'll only be two minutes. Okay. But let's go. Okay. Um, aquí, aquí el lightning pan. Uh, empeñamos, empeñamos oro uh, que, que tiene y, y todas las cosas que tiene la casa podemos empeñar o, o si quiere venderlos. Los compramos también. Uh, y y es, es un buen lugar para venir si necesita un poco de cash. Uh, puede venir y empeñar las cosas. Uh, no venderlos si no quiere. Si se los, los quiere vender, está bien. No, los compramos también. Uh, nos gustamos la, 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 la gente que habla español aquí porque uh, podemos comunicar con, con, con ustedes. Uh, bien, y el otro persona que trabaja aquí también es, es de México y, y uh, entonces habla aún mejor que, mucho mejor que, que nosotros ¿no? somos gringos nosotros dos sí. <risa> canadiense gringo uh -huh. canadiense con acento de argentino exactamente entonces si quiere venir y empeñar por comprar hay una persona siempre aquí para hablar con ustedes uh, que, que les entiende y, y siempre hay una persona que, que puede comunicar con ellos. Perfectamente. Entonces, vengan aquí y ustedes pueden uh, 
recibir el servicio que tendrían que recibir y el respeto uh -huh. que tendrían que recibir y se podrían comunicar bien. Muy bien. Muy bien. Esos dos minutos. Creo que sí. That's it. That's our Spanish lightning round. Two minute Spanish lightning round. We'll do that towards the uh, end of each episode. Absolutely. So, uh, this is our first episode. Again, ask questions. Facebook, uh, email address, uh, write in the conversation underneath this. We would love to hear what you want from Pond Boys. What do you want to hear? What What are the things that you've always wanted to know about the pond industry? I'd love to hear. We'll try to. We'll do our best to try to cover it, get it on, maybe get the right guest on that we can talk to that maybe has some in different insights. I mean, I don't even want to see my ugly mug every week, but we'll get some different people on here that you can uh, that you can they check out. That's so. right. So thank you very much for watching this week's episode of the Pond Boys. Thank you very much. Hope to see you next week. And uh, tell all your friends about it, and tell us what you want to hear, and we will be talking 9.30 or 9 o'clock. 9.30. Let's, let's Let, make 930. it 9.30. Yeah. 9.30 next week, right here on Google+. And uh, hope to see you again soon. Hasta luego. Hasta la vista. And where did my... Why is my mouse not working? I'll edit this last part out. Wow. It was working the whole time through the show. <laughs>